fun size spooks. Narrowly escaping death, shipwreck edition. When ships and souls are lost at sea, there are often a fortunate few who escape Davy Jones' locker through sheer luck. Here are the stories of some of the most remarkable escapes. In November 1120, Prince William, the 17-year-old son of King Henry I of England and other young men of the court, held a raucous party on board the White Ship. The passengers and crew were all drunk and the ship crashed on the rocks. Everyone on board drowned. Their cries could be heard on land all night, but no one could save them in the dark. William had been the only legitimate son of the king and his half-siblings drowned on board with him. Only his sister Matilda was in line to take the throne when the aging king died. The country had never before had a woman as monarch and they fell into anarchy. But one young man made a lucky escape from the white ship disaster. Prince William's cousin, Stephen Blois, was meant to be on board the ship, but he ate something bad the night before departure and remained on shore with an upset stomach. He escaped the disaster and lived to become the King of England. In 1887, the steamship Britannic collided with another liner, resulting in a dozen deaths and several horrific injuries. On board that voyage was a two-year-old future first lady, Eleanor Roosevelt. After helping his wife into the lifeboat, Eleanor's father held out his arms so that a crewman she was desperately clinging to could pass her along to safety. The crewman finally freed her clinging fingers, and Eleanor always remembered that fall, the feel of plummeting from the deck high above into the pitching lifeboat below, surrounded by cries of terror and shouts for help. The Roosevelts returned to New York, and when her parents attempted to resume their journey, young Eleanor refused to go with them and stayed behind with her aunt. She held a lifelong fear of both water and heights as a result of the experience. In the early 1900s, the golden age of shipping, large and luxurious steamliners were the fastest way for the rich and famous to travel between Europe and America. It was inevitable that disaster would occasionally strike, and for some, it struck more than once. As a young girl, Violet Jessup contracted tuberculosis and was given months to live. She recovered, and at 21 began working as a ship stewardess. She was on board the Olympic in 1911 when it collided with another ship, nearly sinking both. Seven months later, Violet's hard work got her a job on board the ultra-luxurious Titanic for its maiden voyage. That ship hit an iceberg in the mid-Atlantic and sunk, killing 1,500 of the 2,200 souls on board. Crew had a particularly high mortality rate, but Violet was ordered by an officer to climb into a lifeboat to assure reluctant lady passengers that it was safe. Once secure in the lifeboat, Violet was handed a baby, which she kept safe until the child's mother found her after they were rescued. By 1916, World War I was in full swing and Violet, now trained as a nurse, was working aboard the Titanic's sister ship, the Britannic, which was requisitioned as a medical ship and stationed in the Aegean Sea. Note that this was a different Britannic than the one Eleanor Roosevelt faced peril aboard. The ship hit a U-boat mine, which ripped apart the bulkhead and sank the ship. This time, Violet didn't make it to a lifeboat in time, which was lucky as most of the 30 people who perished were in lifeboats that were launched while the ship was still moving full speed ahead. The boats were sucked into the propellers. Violet instead helped patients aboard lifeboats until the captain called for all to abandon ship. By then, all the lifeboats had been launched and Violet had no choice but to jump into the sea. She survived her third oceanic ordeal and wasn't scared off. She continued to work aboard ships until she retired at the age of 61. She luckily never endured another shipwreck. Another survivor of the Titanic, English aristocrat and fashion designer Lucy Duff Gordon and her husband Cosmo met with scandal on their return home. Cosmo was frowned upon for taking a place in a lifeboat when it was supposed to be women and children first. The couple escaped in lifeboat number one with only 10 other people. The boat had a capacity of 40. 
Worse yet, witnesses claimed that Cosmo bribed the crew on board to not return to the scene of the wreck to pick up more survivors. Three years later, the couple booked passage on the Lusitania, but canceled their plans when Lucy fell ill. The Lusitania was torpedoed by German U-boats and sunk in 18 minutes, killing 1,200 of the 1,900 aboard. Italian fashion designer Philip Mangoni survived the Lusitania, and in 1937 decided to take a trip aboard the remarkable new mode of transportation, the airship Hindenburg. Minutes before landing in New York, the Zeppelin caught fire, killing 35 of the 97 people on board. Philip survived yet again. What was it that kept these fortunate few from peril while others met their end in a watery grave? Intuition? Perseverance? Sheer luck? Who's to say? But maybe the next time you're booked on the maiden voyage of a luxury liner and you get a tummy bug, take it as a sign to stay on solid ground. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon and help me make more horrifying videos. Patrons get cool perks like exclusive content, mentions in videos, and can even request video topics. A link to my Patreon is in the description. Thank you for watching and unpleasant dreams, darlings.